meeting is go. now being recorded. Um, so th this is our, our kind of our second workshop about uh, automation in HubSpot, especially using the new operations hub features. Uh, this time we're, we're going to go into coded uh, solutions. And thank you all for coming. We are so excited to have you all here. There has been an overwhelming amount of interest in this in this session. Uh, we are so grateful to all of you for, for signing up, for, for coming. Uh, because there's so much interest, we are planning on doing this again a week from now. Um, so uh, a week from now, we'll do another session, bring more questions. Uh, we will get to as many of your use cases today as we can. But if we don't get to them today, don't worry, we will back, be back next week for more. So um, kind of before we hop in here, just a few quick kind of housekeeping expectation sorts of things. Um, we want to take requests from you. If you have questions about how would you code a particular solution in HubSpot, how would you use custom code to accomplish a particular thing, I want you to drop those into the Q&A box. Um, so there's a Q&A box in, in, uh, the, the, in Zoom. Uh, Carrie has asked, will we receive a recording of this session? Yes, uh, perfect. <laughs> we are we are recording that, and we will send that out. Um, and so, uh, if if you can in the Q and A drop any requests, you'd love to see this. You have a question about that. You have an idea. You're wondering if it's possible. Q and A is the place for you. Uh, chat is just going to be for general banter, ideas, uh, other other sorts of questions you have. I will be monitoring that. Um, so while you are trying to think of use cases you would like to see, questions you have, um, I'm going to kick it over to Jack. He's a solutions engineer here at HubSpot. He's going to show you some things he's built. Um, just to kind of get the juices flowing. And then hopefully by the time he's done, we'll have lots of requests from you that, that we can take and work through. But um, I'll go ahead and pass. Oh, wait, one thing I forgot. Before you go, Jack, um, in the chat, everybody, we'd love to hear from you. What is your level of, of expertise here? Do you feel like you are the sort of person who could just jump in and write the JavaScript and produce these custom code objects uh, or custom code actions? Um, are you noob, <laughs> like April here? Uh, maybe a scale of one to five. One is you're brand new to this, have no idea what JavaScript is. Five is like you could code this in your sleep and you're really just here looking for inspiration and, and clients to serve. Um, perfect. This is good. Um, so we've got a, a range. I'm seeing a couple fives here. I'm super excited to have you guys here. Some fours, but lots of ones, lots of ones, some twos and threes. Um, Code Academy, love it. Okay, so go ahead and keep dropping that in there, Jack. Now I'm passing it over to you, uh, inspire us. Great, no problem. And thanks, Kyle, for the introduction. And it's good that there's a variety of different uh, skill levels on the call because uh, I think we'll, it, we'll, we'll cater for everybody today. We'll see a, a touch of everything. So um, I think it'll be a really great session. I'm gonna share my screen. Hopefully in a moment, you'll see my uh, HubSpot uh, workflows tool up on the screen there. Um, and I'm just going to run through a couple of examples as to how I've used Operations Hub to date um, to test and try what's known as programmable automation, which is a way to create your own logic to solve for business critical processes that you may have internally. Maybe you want to interact with another system. Maybe you want to check another system if something happens in the HubSpot CRM and you want to then pass data back into HubSpot to, to do something. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways that I've done this today. Um, and then we'll be opening it up to the, to the audience for, for, for use cases, as Kyle's mentioned. One of the first things that um, uh, that kind of appealed to me when I looked at Operations Hub was, uh, obviously, I'm talking to people every day who are very, very focused on email deliverability, maintaining a strong sender reputation, and ensuring that the, the overall deliverability of the, their emails that they're sending. But equally, I'm also talking to people who are trying to cut down the noise in the CRM, that are trying to make sure that there isn't people in, or contact records in that CRM that are redundant or useless contacts that just shouldn't be there. Uh, so one of the things I started thinking about was how about using Operations Hub to integrate with a third-party email verification service, something like Kickbox, for example. And there's so many out there. Uh, I just chose Kickbox as a matter of preference. Um, and really what these services allow you to do is that you can send an email address over and it will, it will validate that email address and give it a score. So you'll actually see down here on the left-hand side, if I zoom in here onto my contact record here for Elon Musk, and no surprise, uh, I, <laughs> I didn't guess e Elon Musk's email address, uh, or if I did, it's coming back as low deliverability. So the system is doing its job. But you can see that Kickbox oops, is telling me, right, well, this is a risky email address. It's, it, it could fall into one of these categories. Um, it comes back with a specific reason. Invalid SMTP would, or unavailable SMTP would likely be a reason maybe for me just to remove this contact because it simply just is, isn't worth my while um, uh, marketing to them. And we also have some other interesting parameters like the Sendex score, which is an algorithm that's run on Kickbox's side that uses a whole load of data that they have to basically score it between zero and one to say whether or not this email is worth emailing. So 0.75 isn't a bad metric actually or a bad score given the, the scale. 
but uh, needless to say, he still hasn't responded to any of my, my calls or my meetings uh, yet, so I doubt it is his email address. But we're also getting information around whether or not this is a role-based email address, a sales at, an info at, a support at, uh, whether it's a free mail address. Um, and also what I particularly like about Kickbox is it'll actually come back with some suggestions if there are any as well. So there's lots of interesting ways to use this on the front end of your website to make things easier for your users. But if we look at how this data got here in the first place. So what I did firstly was I went over to Kickbox and I read the documentation and I found something that looked like I, what I needed. Email verification API. You send us an email and we send you back some information about that email. And then what I did was I jumped into um, my uh, workflows tool and I built out a, a flow like this. So this is a contact-based workflow. Obviously, um, I wanted to trigger this when a contact was created or if a form was submitted. But for anyone who isn't familiar with the workflows tool, you can actually trigger these automations with a variety of different um, uh, uh, criteria. Now, in this case, then, if someone enters the CRM, I execute some code to talk to Kickbox to see if this email is a valid one or you know, what, what it can tell me about that. And what I've also done then is I've added some if-then logic. So based on the response I get back from Kickbox, I can send this individual down pathway one, two, or three, or four, or whatever the case may be, um, and potentially delete that contact from the CRM with another custom coded action, or send a task to their owner, or something like that. So the, the most important thing here, where, where much of the, the logic lives, is within this code snippet. And I won't go through this line line for line um, because it just would be, uh, I just don't think it would be incredibly beneficial. Um, hopefully that's visible to people, but effectively what these code snippets are, are a JavaScript running in a Node.js runtime environment. So what we've got towards the top, they'll always have this same structure is you've got the libraries that you wish to use. Currently we support, I think it's eight or nine predefined libraries. It's in the documentation. But if you're talking to a third party system, you're going to want to use the request library so you can make those HTTP requests. Um, we also have this exports.main function. And this is where the actual logic, if you will, that, that is behind that custom coded action resides. So what this does is effectively, it, 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 it's called, we pull out the email address of the individual that's currently in the, the workflow. We then get ready to make a request to the Kickbox API. And what we basically do is we, we're hitting an endpoint we're passing through an email address, and it's responding with a whole load of data that we're basically storing in some variables, and I'm then stamping the contact or updating the contact accordingly. What I could do also, this is a kind of a, a, a pro tip or something to keep in mind, is you'll notice here I'm actually taking the information from Kickbox, and I'm then making an initial request to the HubSpot API to update this contact so that I can update these properties en masse. But what you can also do is if I scroll down here, you'll see that there's data outputs. So what I could do is I could, um, whoops, if I zoom out a little bit, uh, I could actually add a data output. Um, I could choose the type of data and I could store it here uh, or provide a, a name for that information. And then what that allows me to do, if I go back a step, is I could actually copy that information into a property. So if I come in here and I look for the copy property value, uh, you can see here we can copy from the custom coded workflow and any any of the, the data outputs I've specified will be listed here and I can copy them into the respective property in HubSpot. So there's a lot of ways to manage that. And then naturally we have the if then logic uh, further down the, the, the way here. I then also thought about, well, Elon Musk, obviously it's great to validate email addresses and understand a bit more. What about taking data enrichment to the next level? What about looking at, um, you know, HubSpot Insights tool, which is obviously a very good tool and does a, a great job. But what about actually talking to a dedicated data enrichment platform like Clearbit and using the information there to get a bit more insights into the companies that are created in the CRM? So you'll notice here this time on the left-hand side, I've got a whole host of information coming back from Clearbit that has everything and anything related to tesla.com. And again, a rinse and repeat of what we just looked at, I headed over to the Clearbit documentation. I found the API I wanted to use. I saw all of the information that it returns. I was like, great, that's brilliant. That's what I need. Let's get building a custom coded uh, workflow to do that. So effectively, what I was able to do was if a company is created, just simply creating a company workflow. And if a company is created, we've got our custom code action. And again, we have much the same, the same uh, flow, but this time we're getting a lot more data back from, from the system we're talking to. I was currently enrolled with this information. 
So these were these were two ways in, in which I, 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 I've approached this. And one other thing I would say is that, you know, you don't have to talk to um, a third party like Clearbit or uh, Kickbox or another CRM or another whatever system you're talking to. What you could actually do as well, um, and I hopefully have it here towards the end, is you could actually connect to your own internal applications database. So in this instance, I have a, a workflow that connects to a MySQL database. Uh, and what it does is it actually looks to see if uh, a particular contact exists in that database. And if it did, if it does, it comes back with some information and I can send them down a couple of different pathways. So you can actually see how you can begin to integrate this logic into your, your other systems, not just the, the kind of the named uh, third parties out there that we all know and love, um, to really create a very, very bespoke process using the programmable automation. Um, Another thing I would say, because uh, I'm conscious we're covering a whole host of, of, uh, of information on the call, is that all of the, the, the code that we're looking at here, um, I know that we'll probably be sharing some information afterwards, but I, I've tried to make this as usable as po possible. So anything that I come across, I'm actually uploading the code to um, my, my GitHub account. So if anyone out there is like, oh, well, that, that email verification seemed pretty cool. I'd like to see, I'd like to kind of dive in and see how that worked or, the, the, the data enrichment piece was interesting. If you, if you come here um, on GitHub, you'll actually find those code samples and you can take them away and you can, you know, you can do what you, you like with them. But I'm trying to be as transparent as possible. As of when I come across use cases, I'm gonna be updating this and, and hopefully it'll, it'll benefit you guys out there. But these are just a couple of the ways to date that, that, that I've been using Operations Hub. And in full transparency, Every single day, I see a new use case. Um, it's a it's new territory for HubSpot. It's it's uncharted waters, but very exciting uh, waters. And each and every day, when I'm talking to prospects, or I'm talking to customers, or I'm talking to colleagues, a new use case comes into the into into view, and immediately I'll jump into the into my account and try to flesh that out. So it's been something I've really enjoyed working with, uh, and I I'm, I'm very excited as well to see the direction it goes even further as as we move into the future. Great, thanks, Jack, so much. One, one just follow-up question for you uh, before we we head into some of these use cases. People have have been dropping in. Um, somebody asked, I lost it. Um, but what are the advantages of uh, so the Kickbox thing you showed? We have an integration with Kickbox in the in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And so, how do you think about when do you use standard integrations and when do you use uh, when do you build something from scratch? Yeah, it, it's a great question. Um... So the, absolutely, the HubSpot ecosystem has, uh, I think there's something like 600 plus integrations up there now. And Kickbox is one of them, as is Clearbit. But the way in which these integrations work is that with Kickbox in particular, you import lists, it scans those lists, and you can bring that data back into HubSpot. Um, it's not as, I suppose, flexible when it comes to the automation, whereby if an email address is invalid or comes back as, you know, scores between zero and 0.5, you know, you want to maybe action that data in near real time. So with programmable automation, you can build on top of those integrations. Also with the Clearbit integration, um, that's primarily for uh, co uh, contact information. So one thing it doesn't do is that B2B piece where it, 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 in, in, uh, it um, enriches company information. So you could use Operations Hub to build on top of that. Now, obviously, if the integration does everything you needed to do, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go about trying to you know, reinvent the wheel here, but Operations Hub can be used in conjunction with pre-existing integrations, but also these examples too, I, I'm trying to kind of paint a picture and give a flavor as to potentially how you can leverage these coded actions for your own use cases. It doesn't have to be Clearbit. It doesn't have to be Kickbox. It could be your own application or an entirely different service that is relevant to what your business is doing. Um, so yeah, that, that's really how I'd probably approach that one. Cool, thank you so much. Um, and then there is a request here um, from Kim Hoy, and I'm sure others, uh, they want your GitHub link. <laughs> so can oh, you just yeah, yeah. <laughs> drop that into the chat? Um, yeah, and uh, and uh, then there it is. Okay, yeah. Kim and anyone else, it's, it's now there in the chat. Okay, great. Um, so uh, Connor, I don't know if you're looking at the, the QA, we've got a, a couple of questions in here. Um, uh, if you want to look through those and, and pick your favorite to talk about, there are a couple that are not use sure. cases, but actual just general questions. So while you're picking one, let me answer some of these real quick. Um, anonymous attendee asked, I know this might be a total noob question. Can I write these custom code bits in, in Python? 
And Aliyah asked, will there be more languages supported beyond JS? Um, I transparently don't, uh, so today, no, Python, no, it's, it's all JavaScript. Um, as far as whether we'll, we'll support other languages in the future, I, I, as we don't currently have any plans to do that as far as I know. Um, Python is actually in the works. Um, that that's next oh. in line. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, so perfect. Yeah, so right now it is no JS JavaScript um, only right now, but Python is next in line, given that it is, I suppose, one of the most popular um, uh, languages out there. So I'm not sure any others outside of that, but Python is definitely on the cards. Cool. That is. I learned something today. I'm so glad <laughs> to have you here, Jack. Um, Cool. So uh, Connor, Connor, looks like you've you've tapped a couple of these. Um, I, I'll let you run with them. I, I just want to sure. mention to Ashley real quick. Ashley asked about parsing contents of a text field. You can definitely do that. I would love to hear a little more details about what specific text fields you want to want to parse. Um, I have I have done some JavaScript that like uh, takes state abbreviations and expands them into the full text, or vice versa. Um, you can parse text in a lot of different ways. So if there's a specific thing you're trying to accomplish with with text, let us know. Um, that'll probably be a fun one. Now, Connor, for real, I'm passing it over. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to answer one or two. I think um, the other thing would be super helpful for people who are are uh, pushing in requests would be, give us an example of something you're trying to do. Um, give us a use case for, I think one of the ones that was cool in here, and I'll, I'll pick out a couple of these versus, here's a specific feature would be, here's something I'm trying to build. Here's a solution I'm trying to create. And, and how could I use Operations Hub to help me solve that problem? So one of the first ones that was on here was, would we be able to build an automation based on if someone left an external review? So IE an Amazon review. Um, so this is a really, really good one. I think that there's lots of applications for folks in e-commerce type scenarios. Um, so what I'll start with is something that Jack talked about in when he was going through the kickbox pieces. Can you get that review information via an API is, is really the first question you should ask. Um, I am not ultra familiar with the Amazon Reviews API or if there is an Amazon Reviews API. Uh, however, assuming that there was, um, you would be able to sort of fetch information from that using a coded action. The biggest sort of um, solution that you wanna look at is what Operations Hub is really great at today is triggering custom code off of things that happen inside of HubSpot. So if it's happening somewhere else, we can go and get that information, but we can't necessarily say this happened in Amazon. And so go do these things inside of HubSpot because the triggering system is Amazon itself or that review itself versus that information being inside of HubSpot. And so ways we've, we've done some workarounds here and Jack, I'll open this up to you as well because I can see your gears turning uh, <laughs> also uh, is we, we've been able to sort of do things like um, bef enroll a list. Of, let's say you want to send an email out or you want to run a workflow in HubSpot off of contact records. Um, perhaps if there's a reviews API, you could have sort of the enroll all of the contacts into your workflow. Your workflow has a coded action, which says go and check this reviews API for someone who's left a review that matches this, this contact email. Uh, and then pull some of that information into your contacts and then make decision trees off of it. So things that we've done is let's send an email to everybody who's bought something in the last 30 days who has not yet left a review. And so your, your workflow there, and what I'm gonna do is I'll do some like super basic mockups here. Um, Caveats and to echo what Kyle said, does your API that we're talking about support this? Is this call supported? Uh, everything we're talking about is relatively conceptual, but if you were to have a workflow, so let's say this is a, a contact workflow um, and you could enroll sort of a list of contacts into this workflow. So we do like list of contacts and this list could be a smart list. It could be a, 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 a static list and it could essentially say, give me all contacts who have bought something in the last 30 days. So we have our contact workflow. Um, and here's where we could do kind of a, a coded action. So that coded action you could say, um, coded action here. Uh, and this could hit the reviews API. So we could take each individual contact. We could hit the reviews API and do a query that says, do you have a review for this person? Um, then we can do sort of a logic here. So we could say like, has review or doesn't have review. And, and using some of the information that we got back from that individual API request, we can then uh, route have review um, into our next action. So let's say here we have sort of this, this if then branch. Um, and I think the real exciting benefit around Operations Hub and, and some of what Jack had talked about is you can weave the declarative automation into some of the, the coded automation as well. So by sort of saying, do they have a review or do they not? If they don't, maybe we want to send them an email that says, you know, send email 
ask for a review. Um, and if they do have a review, then maybe we want to send them a thank you um, or something to that effect. Um, thanks for your review. So the important thing that's sort of different about, about this type of a function is um, you're, you're really actually having these contacts being on this list trigger this workflow. Um, and that's an important distinction versus the review gets left in inside of Amazon or somewhere else and then comes hey, back. Um, hey, yeah, hey, please go Connor, for that. Sorry to interrupt, but your screen is not updating. <laughs> oh, interesting. Let me try uh, this again. Is this working or no? I started diagramming a bunch of stuff and it didn't work. Well, we, we got like halfway through the diagram and then it, it, it and then was frozen, it I think. Oh no, thank you for interrupting me. Is it pulling up right now or no? Um, we're just seeing the like, Connor Jeffers has started sh screen sharing black background in Zoom. Oh. All right, I'm gonna, I'll try to, to fix that and then maybe I'll pass it back to you to pick another question <laughs> real quick you wanna answer live um, and I'll try to troubleshoot this particular piece. I'm so sorry. Uh, no, you're okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I saw I, a couple people asking or at least one person asking um, about what uh, what subscription that this custom code is in. This is in Operations Hub Professional. So Operations Hub is our newest hub. We just launched it a few weeks ago, a month ago. I don't remember. Um, but Operations Hub Professional is where you can do this custom coding. Um, let's see. I'm looking through these. And one thing I, I'm noticing is people are asking, like, I know people out there may not have the necessary subscription or they're just looking at operations hub they may not move forward with it that's absolutely fine if anyone just wants to try this stuff out uh, what i'd recommend is that you go to developers.hubspot.com and create a developer account the benefits to doing that is that once you have that account set up you can create what are known as test portals um, and these test portals are really just sandbox environments or blank canvases for you to try and test and break things and just get to, uh, familiar with the functionality so if you were to head over there create a developer account you can actually go in there and build out some custom coded automation and try to see if it will solve for your use cases. Um, but yeah, don't 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 let the fact that maybe your current subscription uh, doesn't uh, support it or, or contain the functionality stop you. Developer accounts are quick and easy and free to set up. I'm gonna try to answer another one of these and we'll see if, if we can <laughs> screen share. And if we can't, I may just end up talking, which is okay. Uh, but I like doing the diagram. Is there any chance this is coming up right now? For a lucid chart? Uh, not yet. Oh, we might be we might be in trouble here on the screen share. People are raising hands. I don't know if they're volunteering to help or. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone sees the lucid chart, tell us in the chat. Uh, otherwise, I'll conceptually talk about some of these, and that's okay. If we can't if we can't do the live the live mock-up, it's not the end of the world. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think Lucid Chart's gonna work for us. Today. It's all good, it's okay, we can we can go. So I had another one that was in here, which is, um, can we duplicate an auto-create a deal from one funnel with all details into another based on criteria? So that's an excellent one. Um, what your enrollment trigger would be for that workflow would be, so we actually do something really similar. Um, our operations sub playbook has a bunch of these examples, but um, this one is in there. So essentially what you would do is have your enrollment criteria be, for instance, maybe whenever a deal is one, you wanna auto generate a deal for the renewal, for instance. And so what you could do is have a coded action, which can say, go and find all of these properties that I care about from the deals API. And this would pit your deals API. So we'd use your hub, uh, your hub ID, grab all of the information from that deal that you care about. Uh, you would then create a deal uh, as another follow-up action um, using all of the information that you pulled from that deals API. And you could also, you could copy in different line items if you wanted to look up different owners or territories or some other complex sort of action in there, you could do that as well. So that's a really good example of how you can build a custom action inside of HubSpot that will pull that data create the other record and it all lives directly inside of your portal versus having to work with an external system and sort of build automations that are all running just with data that's in your portal already. Ooh, here's one from uh, Ashley Green. I really like this one. Uh, so this is, I am receiving a formatted text file that is dumped from another app 
into my service hub tickets. I was going to point this one out to you. This is a perfect Connor <laughs> really Jeffers like question. One. Yeah, I love this one. This is really fun. Um, so the, the question from Ashley is receiving a text file dumped in from another app. And I, I'm going to hand probably the chat to you, Kyle, and just let you tee stuff up to me because otherwise I'm going to have to scroll through every time. But, um, and so we get a, a, essentially a CSV. So what Ashley's doing today is importing that into, um, I think, into tickets. Uh, and she wants to parse it and place that data into appropriate properties. Um, this is an awesome solution for Operations Hub because not only could you maybe do with Starter, you could, you could update or format some of those fields, but you can even take that a step further. So something that we've done is uh, when you import tickets, maybe you have an ID field of, of a contact or maybe you have an email of a contact in the system and you wanna go see, does that contact exist? And if it does, I want to associate this ticket to that contact. Or if it doesn't, I want to create a new contact. Uh, a coded action can make all of that logic and it can uh, run and it can both find other objects in the CRM and link them to that record. It can also create additional records and associate those together uh, all through that coded workflow action. A twist on this that we've done as well for different integration solutions is actually to create an import custom object. And then when you import those custom objects into HubSpot, a coded action can parse the data that's inside of that imported record. And then it can push that information into other objects inside of the CRM. Um, so it allows you to sort of have this rudimentary import driven integration where you don't necessarily need to map to all of the different properties, find all of the records and do you know four or five different imports to make something like that work. Your coded action can just parse that record and then create other objects inside the CRM all within that code itself. I can start scrolling through unless you have a new one that awesome. you want me to tackle. Uh, before I uh, go ahead and start scrolling through, Jack, I want to, uh, Steve, Steve has asked a couple times about, um, uh, looking up it, it data in in HubDB, mm -hmm. I am not super sharp on HubDB. Uh, do you know the the mystery of of how custom code and HubDB work together? Uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh, on that, what I'd recommend is that whether it is a contact, a company, a deal, a ticket, whatever record in the CRM you're looking to trigger this off of, you go about and create this the, the workflow. You add your custom coded action, and HubDB has its own set of APIs um, that you can. Uh, uh, Query the information within within the table. So that's one one approach to take. Um, so if you do have HubDB, custom code could be used to to query data in there um, and potentially you know send them down different branches or do something off of the back of that. Uh, but it's uh, yeah, it's an interesting one. Cool. I have another one on here from uh, Alice who asks, uh, can we use this function to integrate with NetSuite or other CRMs? Um, absolutely. Uh, this is one of the most common use cases that we're typically seeing with customers of ours, which is they want to go create uh, a record in another CRM or another system when something happens at HubSpot. So the most common use case we're seeing is whenever a deal is marked closed one, I want to create a customer inside of NetSuite. I want to create invoices inside of NetSuite. I want to look up additional information and, and update something on this deal. So if this person already has an active account, maybe I need to update that information. Or if they don't, maybe I need to send an email to ask them who their billing contact is, for instance. Um, so a coded action could run in HubSpot, go and hit that NetSuite API, um, create information, look up information, pull that information back. Um, and when you use some of the actions to actually update data in HubSpot as well, you're also then able to use some of the declarative automation functions uh, so that after we have that, we can say, okay, now check, does this billing contact exist um, off of just that deal record itself and then do native HubSpot declarative automation off of that. And so you're sort of using those coded actions to create data in other CRMs or other ERP solutions, as well as fetch data from those systems and then run uh, logic based off of the information that comes back. So that's a really common use case that we're seeing. Um, there's also in some of the, um, this, the, the sync uh, in, in the pro or starter features and the pro features um, that you can do some of the native object to object records, uh, which doesn't even require you to use some of the JavaScript, but we can talk about that in, in less coded automation type, uh, type sessions as well. Sure. And I just want to mention to, to Daniel, um, uh, what, what Connor just said, I think answers your question also. Um, you, about being able to, to pull in data from another system, do, do things with it, and then send it back. Um, 
I, I think that answers your question. If not, feel free to ask it again. I also want to call out Scotty asked, um, when, when we're accessing a HubSpot API through these custom code actions, do we still need to use our API key? And the answer is yes. And I, I just want to mention here that part of, of the custom code workflow action is secret storage. And so things like API keys or any other sensitive data that you want to use in your code, you can store as a secret, which is encrypted and stored on HubSpot servers. And those are then available inside of any of your, the custom code actions inside your account. So if you store your HubSpot API key as a secret called HubSpot API key or happy key or whatever you call it, then um, you can access that in later code and you don't have to constantly be typing or copy pasting your, your API key. You can just, uh, there's a little bit of code you can type um, process.env. whatever you call your secret um, and then you can access it. So uh, yeah, I hope that answers that question. That hopefully you should actually be up on the screen. I don't know if I'm also getting screen sharing issues. Yeah, but, no, uh, no, we, we, we can see that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a really good point because um, naturally you don't want the information behind this to be publicly accessible or necessarily visible to other people in the account. So you can very easily add them. And you can basically see here, and I, I know it's hard to see, it's, it's very difficult for me. Oh, there we go, zoomed in. <laughs> you can see how I'm referencing my API key at the, at the end here. So um, I can include them and I can reference them, but I don't only have to uh, reference keys. One of the other examples too that we looked at uh, around the uh, custom, uh, the, the uh, MySQL database is referencing keys that would uh, handle connecting to that database. So you can see here, in this instance, uh, so let me zoom in again, but this time what I'm doing is I'm including my host, my user name, my password, and the database I want to connect to. And obviously this information, if you guys could all see it, could likely uh, cause some issues for me. So I can keep that hidden, but not impact the overall performance of the workflow or the act itself. Yeah. Um, I, I, wanna, I wanna tackle a question from Alan. Um, and this also relates to, someone asked uh, whether HubSpot will uh, be uh, providing a collection of, of common code things like, like Jack's uh, GitHub. Um, and Alan, that might not sound like it's related to your question at all. Al Alan asked if there will be a, a clicks not code action similar to like if then tools like Zapier um, in addition or instead of this, this custom code. And actually we have released that as part of Operations Hub also. There's a, a format data action that does a lot of pretty, right now pretty basic things. Um, a sort of, if you can imagine like a spreadsheet, um, <laughs> you, you, can, you can format text, you can, you can do basic calculations, you can do some things like that. We will expand on that over time. Um, I, I expect the custom code action will always be code-based. Uh, that is what it is, that's what it's for. But you will see some, some sort of more intermediate things also. And the reason I say this is related to uh, GitHub. When custom code actions were in beta, <clears throat> I was working with that beta group. We, the product team was working with them. We said, let us know what you're using this for so we can create this collection of common use cases and, and a code library. And everybody told us we're using it to capitalize names. We're using it to capitalize names. We're using it to capitalize names. Uh, and so we just built the data format action that capitalizes names, <laughs> right? And so now uh, we are we are kind of starting from scratch with building this this library of of common code use cases. But uh, we will we will be building that over time. So kind of entering multiple questions simultaneously there. I hope that's clear. One, one other thing to, that's worth noting on that as well is that. Um, what a lot of integrators have started doing now is creating what are known as workflow extensions, which are a slightly different thing to custom coded actions and we're not looking at them today, but a workflow extension is a way of wrapping up all of this complex logic to do something in another system, but allow you as a content editor or a, the, the workflow user to actually control how that extension works. So a really good example is if anyone's used any of the, the SMS integrations on the ecosystem, um, you're able to uh, send an SMS to someone's phone number and you can say what the body of that SMS will entail. That is obviously behind the scenes a very, very complex system, but it's, it's provided to you with a very easy plug and play type of, of uh, um, interface. So uh, the workflow uh, extensions API is the way uh, to do that. Um, and there's a lot of apps on the ecosystem that already uh, support that. I had one that was uh, that was in here, which is, is there a way to have a time-based trigger pull data from another system? So an example, which was a workflow that runs every hour to check data in another system. Uh, we have done this. Uh, it, it, it may be in workaround 
arena, but I'll, I'll tell you what we've done in the past, uh, which is you can have workflows in HubSpot um, sort of trigger each other. And you can also have workflows scheduled to run every hour. So if you're toggling sort of a, think about it as you have two workflows um, and you sort of have a checkbox field. So one workflow runs whenever that box is checked, the other workflow runs whenever that box is unchecked and you could use those workflows to trigger each other. And so similarly, you could have a coded action uh, that each one of those workflows runs that goes and checks that information from another system. So you can kind of get yourself like a little kind of HubSpot built cron job uh, type of, of function, which is something that we built in the past. Um, the way you build that will definitely matter. Uh, Ryan, if you, if you want to follow with me directly, I'd be happy to chat around the specific use case, but um, there are sort of like time limits on, on how long your action can run an individual coded action. So you'll want to think about um, how your trigger is running if you're if you're sort of querying millions of records uh, from another tool and, and that could possibly time out, but you would be able to have two workflows sort of like pass the ball back and forth, uh, run that coded action, pull data from another system and then make decisions off of it. Um, my recommendation would be that you're you're really querying for individual records. So if you're enrolling contacts into a workflow, for instance, each contact is pulling a single API request versus you're sort of pulling all of the data every single time. Uh, but you could achieve something uh, like that use case to sort of like enrich all of the contacts in your database from an external system nightly, uh, for instance, using a coded action. I want to hop on a question from uh, Alaya, uh, just pointing out there are lots of different options now, right? Deciding how to move data between sources, whether it's an integration, whether it's a custom code solution. Um, and, and there isn't a, a clear, hard, fast rule about how you choose one over the other, Alaya. Uh, um, but I would just say it depends a lot on what you're trying to accomplish. If you look at an out of the box integration and it does what you want to do, go with that. That's always going to be simpler. Um, but if it doesn't, right, if there's some specific thing you need to do or, or you don't just want the data passed, you want it somehow processed and, and, and the numbers crunched and, and new information, then that's a great place to use uh, custom code action. And you'll generally, I mean, if, if you can code it or if you know someone who can code it or you can hire someone to code it, uh, you can pretty much make it happen. I think on that point too, like another thing as well is obviously the more, um, the more experience you have with you know, coding and JavaScript, the, the, uh, the more power you are going to get out of this. But I think the nature of the world we live in now is if you are looking to do something and you just say, how do I do insert whatever you're looking to do here with JavaScript and look at the results that come back, you can generally start to find solutions that you can kind of put together yourself and copy and paste and try things. I know they're not perfect, but in some instances, it can remove the need maybe to, to, to have a, uh, a dedicated technical resource. Um, and it can, you know, give you guys a little bit more, um, uh, you know, control. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I use Google every single day. Um, and I think a lot of us out there do, and there's a lot of really useful resources and snippets on Google to do all sorts of types of manipulation with, 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 uh, with data, whether it's, um, you know, calculating the time between dates, whether it's, uh, sorting through a list of, uh, information whether it's connecting to a database, you can nine times out of 10 find the, the blocks that you need um, to, to put it together. I saw one in here, which was uh, from an anonymous person, which was we're trying to build automation to copy certain properties between parent and child companies. Um, you should be able to do this. I know that there are some, uh, some limitations that I, I believe that they've recently been patched on some of the parent company uh, properties and if you can access them via API, but you could use a coded automation on a, on a child company, for instance, that whenever a company goes through this workflow, um, go and check for any, any parent company that has uh, that, or I guess it would be the other way because the parent company is associated, but you could use the CRM associations API to find data about that record and then you could copy it over. And so we're actually doing something like that very similar with an app we recently launched, uh, which is on the marketplace. But I think to Jack's point, one of the really exciting things about Operations Hub is a lot of the different functionality that's been either in external apps or things you had to install, you can now in, put into your portal with sort of a couple lines of, of JavaScript to make work. But uh, to achieve that use case, you would have a workflow run off of the company record, you would pull the associated records via the company's API or the CRM objects API for which companies are associated, identify which company you want to copy information from, and then grab those fields and, and specify your destination fields. And you could do all of that within, within your JavaScript for sure. 
We've got one here from, oh, oh sorry. No, uh, all I was going to say was echo what Connor is saying. And also, um, obviously, if a contact or a company goes through that workflow, it's the CRM Associations API that allows you to get more information about the objects or the records associated with it. So it does open up a lot of potential there, um, as Connor has outlined. So CRM Associations API is a great way of looking at deals linked to an individual or a company or the line items on a deal or um, the, the tickets linked to a company. It can be used in a lot of different ways, but you don't necessarily just have to stay at the, uh, the contact level. You can really dive into the data underneath that uh, using the API. I want to um, take one from, uh, I, I can give it to you, Kyle, if you'd like. Oh, OK, just really quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be short, because uh, I'm like the least technical person on this. Uh, sure. But Aaron asked about uh, duplicate management. Um, uh, can we like check when, uh, when a record is created, uh, check to see if it's a duplicate, and if so, uh, assign a task to something or somebody. Uh, this is actually a, a really great use case, I think, uh, for custom code in a larger uh, workflow. A lot of a lot of custom code workflows I see seem to just be enrollment trigger custom code. Uh, but you could you could have enrollment trigger custom code, right? The enrollment trigger could be a record is created, and the custom code could be we're going to pull this property and we're going to search to see if it, any other records have that same property and have an output, right? Possible duplicate or not a duplicate. And then you could have branching logic in your workflow below that to assign tasks or or to to uh, do whatever you want to do based on that. So um, I think that's I think that's a fun use case. Uh, that's uh, all I wanted to say about that. Go ahead, Connor. I, I answered one in the in typing, and then I'll answer one live too. Which is Tyler asked about the app. Um, I, I put the the listing link. It's called Associate in um, into the chat here. There was another one that I saw in here, which was, um, are there plans to implement this for custom objects? Um, so custom coded actions, I I believe you can run on custom objects, Jack. I don't, yep. Yeah, I, I was. Indeed. I, for sure. I was about to say, I was like, if that's not true, then most of what I'm saying is absolutely not true. And I'm 100% sure that it is. So the answer is yes, Ben. Uh, actually, I think custom coded actions on top of custom objects are, are really some of the most powerful things you can do inside of HubSpot because you can now use HubSpot CRM platform to build big automation trees with multiple objects, multiple databases, multiple pieces of functionality, and you can have an action run off of a custom object. It can find data about records that are linked to that custom object. It can also create other objects. And so one of the things that we're most excited about, and I, I could talk about this for a long time, so I'll step off of the soapbox here in a second, but is actually using the combination of custom objects and custom coded actions to build fully native HubSpot applications to solve really anything you can imagine. Um, and the ability to have a custom coded action occur off of an object and and power that through workflows allows you to really build anything you can imagine inside of HubSpot um, and build full applications that are native to your specific HubSpot instance without needing any other integrations or, or other systems or tools. And the one thing I just want to add to that is, is the ability to build workflows on your custom objects, it, you have that if you have custom objects. That is not an operations hub thing. Um, if you have custom objects, you can you can filter them, you can create workflows on them, you can build reports about them, uh, you can do everything with a custom object you would expect to be able to do with a, a standard object in HubSpot. Uh, that is not uh, an operations hub thing. That's just how custom objects in HubSpot are. Which is which is hopefully what's up on the screen now. We've got our, our yeah. default objects, like a, but we've also, got a bicycle-based we, workflow in there. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> Don't ask me. There's a lot of strange objects in my portal, but yeah, we've got a bicycle-based workflow. We could absolutely create one, and you can see here, just like all of the other workflow types, we've got all the different actions available to us, and custom code and formatting data and things like that uh, are available to us there. I had another one here from uh, from Scotty, which is if there are functions that you want to use in multiple workflows, is there a way to reference it rather than have duplicate code? in multiple workflows. Um, so the beauty of this is the workflows tool. Um, so you can have an action in your workflow that is add to workflow. So what you would do in that situation, and uh, Kyle was telling me that maybe my screen share is going to work. So I'm, I'm going to try it <laughs> in this situation. Did it come up or, or no? Or it works. Blocked? It works. Amazing. Uh, so in this case, what you would do, right, is you would have like your workflow one. So let's say you have a custom action and you want to run it on, uh, on multiple different um, types of situations. Uh, there's a there's a enroll in workflow action inside of the the um, the workflows tool in HubSpot. So essentially, what you would do here is you would have all of these which are enroll in workflow. And what I should have done is uh, is type that in before I copied it over. But uh, we're doing it live, uh, and then you'd have sort of your your coded workflow here. 
Um, and then each of these would, would flow into this particular coded workflow uh, that you wanna run. So that way you could have it in a single place and then you could reference it for multiple other actions from sort of a, a architecting how that's gonna work perspective. You could still copy paste that directly into a bunch of places, but this would probably be easier from a uh, maintenance perspective is, is you're only sort of having that coded action and then your other workflows are referencing that um, from sort of the way the HubSpot workflows are already set up. I'm going. I'm going back to the chat uh, to see what else. I yeah, I, I, I was, I was just typing an answer to Alan, but since uh, nobody else is talking, I'll just talk out my answer. Uh, so Alan says, how do we use this to fix some of the things HubSpot doesn't do, like validation rules, like require a lead status on a new contact, or auto associate deals with companies? Um, so you, you, you can require properties on on contact creation uh, if if you want lead status required when a property is created. Um, Pretty sure that that doesn't require any any custom coding. That's just a, a feature HubSpot has. Um, so I, I can dig up a, a, a knowledge base doc if that would help with that. Um, but uh, uh, for auto associating things, um, you can uh, again uh, depending on how you want that to work, what the logic is. Um, you you could have when a deal is created, you could have a custom code action that pulls in every new deal and and finds a, a company and associates the two together. Um, you would have to. I would want to hear a little more about how, how you're going to identify which company it should go to. Um, but I mean, if, if you start from the company record and, and create the deal there, then they're automatically associated anyway. So I think, I think there are some things here that, that just depending on, on your process of using HubSpot and, and, and just the UI of HubSpot, you can make these things happen without any custom code. Um, but if you have some unique process or, 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 or way of doing things that, that doesn't lend itself to that, uh, you could, yeah, you could probably patch it with, with custom code. Yeah, I have, I have, Oh, no, go for it, Jack, please. Oh, I, I, all I was going to say there is um, I did something similar myself for um, uh, for a referral program thing uh, recently where uh, obviously every contact comes through and has a referrer ID. So I would use a custom coded action to search for a contact matching that referrer ID. And then I was able to you know, make that connection myself uh, by updating a property. The same could be done for, for a deal in a company. If a, if a deal comes in and let's say, I don't know, one of the associated contacts, if the company name is XYZ, or in the name of the deal, the company name is present or something like that, you could equally use the search API to query the HubSpot CRM to pull back records that match, and you're free really to do whatever you like at that point. Uh, so there's a lot of options there to, to consider. I had one here I, that I was going to tackle um, from uh, from... Sorry, go for Kyle. Before you do, um, uh, just we we we've got about twelve minutes left in the session. We're going to be pushing out a, a poll. We'd love to know, especially since a lot of you ranked yourselves as ones and twos. Has this session been helpful? Uh, are there things we could do differently? Again, we are planning on on doing this again next week. Uh, so if, if we run out of time, we don't get to your question. Bring it again next week, and we'll be here again. Um, but if if you have any feedback on how we can make this more valuable as we do it on a, a more regular basis, uh, we are new to this. So any feedback you have for us will be appreciated. Uh, we'll be pushing that poll out in a in a couple minutes. Take it away, Connor. Absolutely. Uh, I had one from Tyler, which is uh, I think referencing our operations have playbook, uh, which was uh, I heard OpSub may be able to do more advanced things such as forecasting a rep's deals to their average sales cycle uh, or at their average deal size. How would this work with custom code? So the way that we had built uh, that particular functionality um, with operations hub was by whenever a deal was created, um, and I, this actually ties into what Jack was just talking about with the, with the search criteria, which is whenever a deal was created, we were going and searching for any of the deals that were owned by, by that particular owner. Uh, and then we were checking, you know, how long was the average deal that they closed open before they closed it, um, running a, a calculation off of that, and then stamping it into a property on the deal. So essentially what that would let you do is every time a deal is created, we're going and finding out how long does it take on average to close deals that are like this one. And then we're stamping that into a property. And so you're using sort of the search API to find deals, and then you're running calculations off of the data you get back, and then stamping those into a property property record. And so we have similar examples in the operations sub playbook for um, like average like ticket response time or, or deal creation and forecasting and uh, really grabbing data from other parts of the system and, and pulling them back into whichever record triggered your coded action. One thing as well is a couple of people were just asking like some of the examples we looked at earlier, if we could share the code. 
Um, I, I've, I've just put a, a link into the chat. That's a, an article that I kind of created around the examples we looked at earlier on. And there's a little bit more information in there as well. Um, but it runs through the, the code. It, it also has a video walkthrough where I talk about um, how the solution works. So it will go into a little bit more depth as well for you guys. Um, so that, that's a resource that you can take away after today as well. So if anyone needs to, to dive in a bit more detail, that's there. I can start grabbing stuff. Uh, there was one on here from, from April Hudson for uh, importing data from Metabase and building reports uh, without creating a bunch of properties to house this information. Um, I don't think necessarily the operations hub itself uh, would, would help with that particular piece. I'd be happy to talk to you about that more directly. If you want to send me a follow-up, I'd, I'd be happy to chat around it. Um, I think that the main piece for, for Operations Hub is you, you don't have to put the data somewhere, right? So if Operations Hub is pulling information in, it does have to go into somewhere. So whether it's, it's properties on an object or something else that's reportable inside of HubSpot, um, and then you could use sort of that, that uh, solution I mentioned before of, of having an import object. Um, but we've, we've done some work with Metabase, and I'd be happy to talk to you about it directly as well. There's one here from, from Daniel Say for, can this work with other data biz applications outside of HubSpot? So I, my answer to that one is what we've done uh, in the past is you could use an operations hub coded action to push information into another database. So what Jack was talking about with Kickbox is, is sort of a pull integration of when these things happen, go to another system, pull that back. Um, you could push information using that as well. So if you had another data visualization application that was running on an external database, Operations Hub could help you push that over. So we've, we've had applications where um, users want to sort of push information into something like a Snowflake or into like a Redshift or, or MongoDB or something. Um, you could use Operations Hub to push that information uh, into those systems. Um, there are also much more robust ways of doing that depending on your data architecture as well. So I don't wanna say that's the only method, uh, but you can use an operation subcoded action to push information into an external database. And if you're running a data visualization tool on top of that database, um, you would then have that information there as well. Uh, ooh, this is a good one from, from Scotty, uh, which is if I get some data, uh, can I then append it to a field rather than overwriting the field? Uh, yes, uh, great operations have use case. Uh, so whenever you have, you just need to trigger your workflow. So your workflow would get triggered, your operation subcode would run, and then it could take, so let's say you have sort of like field, field one is the field that um, you want to append in, and then field two is the field that has all the appended information in it. Um, what you would do is you would run your coded action, um, your coded action would take the data from uh, field one, it would then find the data from field two, it would append those two together, and then it would just update field two with that information. And you could really expand that to multiple objects, multiple different workflows and different fields, um, but that's a really great uh, use case for, for something like an operations hub as well. I can, I can go scroll through. I answered most of the ones that were key on my side. Um, so we're getting, uh, uh, so I just scrolled down to the bottom and the, the most recent one is, is uh, referencing an earlier question about text messages. Um, I can't seem to find. I don't know if we answered that. I, I uh, have this one up top and I'm, I'm happy to speak to it very briefly. Or if you're looking to close out, Kyle, I can let you move forward with that. Um, I just want to mention, um, we, we have some integrations uh, in, in the marketplace that do text message stuff. I would definitely recommend starting there. Um, there are some coding actions you could probably do to, to do a text message. But I, I, think, I think for text messages specifically, uh, you're going to be better off just using one of the integrations that exist. I think that's going to be much more straightforward and simple. Uh, yeah, Connor, if you want to answer, I, one I more. agree. <laughs> that was that was uh, that was my answer on that one. If if you want to answer one more, we'll we'll let uh, that be the final one, and then I'll I'll wrap things up. 
I don't have another one that's in here. That's oh, okay. That's newer than that. So I can't right. really wrap thought, up. Sorry, I thought you did. All right. You're okay. Um, cool. So um, there are lots of questions and they're still rolling in. So please <laughs> look for an announcement for us. Uh, we will be doing this again next week. We would like to do this on an ongoing basis as long as there's interest for it. Um, so it's going to take us a little bit of time to figure out the right way to position us, the right cadence. But for now, we're going on the hypothesis that once a week is not too frequent. So we'll be back next week and do this again. We would love for you all to come and bring your friends and tell others. Um, we'll, we'll be taking questions live, similar format. Um, if you have any feedback on this uh, format, feel free to reach out to us. You can reach out to me directly. Um, uh, uh, LinkedIn is probably the best place to find me. Connect with me. Send me your questions, your feedback, your thoughts, uh, your complaints. Uh, I'll take whatever you want to give me. Um, thanks so much to, to Jack and Connor for bringing the brains to this, uh, this session. Um, I am, I'm grateful to them, and, and I, I hope it was valuable for you all. And thank you, thank you, thank you all for, for coming. We are overwhelmed with how many people registered and showed up. This has been fantastic, and we will be back next week. Um, but with that, we're going to go ahead and end it. Hope you all have a great day, and maybe we'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye. -bye. Bye.